dive into all of that now with Lyle Stein. He's president of Forvest Global Wealth Management, and he joins us here. And Lyle, it's nice to see you. Good morning. I, I do think that taking one stock story as we wait some economic data in the U.S. and compare it to this lingering story about when rates start to be cut by central banks is an interesting one. It seems like a bit of a balancing act between inflation fighting and consumer worries. Uh, you, you've hit it. I think you know, if you're sitting there in the central bankers' seats, not just Canada, the U.S., it's a big question. You want to make sure that the inflation genie that came out of the bottle is put back. We've seen it on the good side. We've seen it with respect to costs of inputs falling from the pandemic highs or rate of increases slowing is maybe a better way to put it. But on the service side, it's not really going away. And you and I consume services. Two-thirds of the economy is services. The Canadian Tire story today is quite interesting because it shows, I think, the softness of the Canadian economy relative to the U.S. economy, number one, and the fact that consumers in Canada just don't have the same oomph that they've had in the U.S. because of a lack of personal income growth in Canada. That's just not a, a recent thing. That's a long-term trend. But when your discretionary spending falls, you get worried you don't spend at Canadian Tire. And, you know, we'll, we'll track the market reaction to Canadian Tire. They did talk about some seasonably different weather. I mean, it has been, in, in a lot of parts of the country, milder. And so that, mm -hmm. that's, you know, if you're gearing up to sell a lot of ski or winter gear at any of your locations, you got to prepare for that in advance. You, you don't know what Mother Nature is going to do. But to your earlier point, if the income growth is limited, even though people keep talking about things like wage inflation, and then what at this point seems to be the biggest contributor to inflation at, the, at this point yep. in the inflation story being your borrowing costs, your mortgage yep. costs, the interest-related expense there, that's something that you, you can't avoid uh, as a consumer when you're counting your pennies. This is, again, this is part of the dilemma that we've got. The discretionary spending falls when your mortgage costs go up. you got to put a roof over your head. you got to put food on the table. You just can't buy the stuff that you might thought you needed or wanted. And so that's what's hitting, I think, the Canadian com uh, economy harder, and it's hitting tire. So when you look at the outlook for Canada's economy, and I think the one thing we've talked about frequently in recent months is that our mortgage market, not to come back to mortgages, but look, uh, the duration of oh. mortgages in this country is completely different yeah. than the United States. You, know, you have some people, let's say, theoretically, they lock in like a 30-year mortgage, and they're not as sensitive in the interim to interest rates, even if you had had good timing in locking in a lower interest rate mortgage in this country, inevitably that sort of five-year cycle is, is fast approaching. And that's been one of the challenges, I think, for people in trying to determine where Canada's economy is headed and what we do on interest rates versus the U.S. You, you were basically getting to that. I mean, that's, yeah. we are a much more interest-sensitive economy, particularly our consumer. You know, that mortgage in the U.S., the 30-year mortgage is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> you have, you get, you get, right. to, you get to, uh, you know, buy it down when yeah. rates fall, and you've got full optionality in the upside. It's, it's wonderful. It's an investment, really, and if, if, right? Exactly. Okay, well, speaking of investments, how do you feel about the environment right now? I mean, we're you know, only a few days removed from all-time highs in the United States uh, in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Canada has lagged. I know we're going to talk about where the momentum yeah. is a little bit later mm -hmm. in the program, but generally speaking, as an investor, what are you thinking about in this environment? It's a, it's a tough environment to be an investor. The good news is rates have come down a little bit from the 5% that we saw in October, but rates are still high. And market sentiment is driven in many respects by this belief that the Fed will exercise the downticks that we thought about. Maybe not six this year. You know, six is now looking more like four. And with the strength in the economy, and that's been the other surprise. I mean, this thing is hard to predict. Yeah. The 23 prediction of a recession didn't happen. Now everybody's into soft landing camp. Maybe they'll get a recession. Well, look, the, the good news is nobody knows the future. So it's, uh, it, 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 you know, whether it's central bankers or top economists on Wall Street or Bay Street, nobody ultimately knows what's going to happen. But would, if, you were, if you were to have to, if, if you had to place a bet, yeah. if we do see rate cuts this year, uh, w do you see a similar amount of action in Canada versus the U.S.? Or do you see more cuts in Canada versus the United States? What, what's, what, what are you leaning towards? Their economy is stronger, ours is weaker. I could see more cuts in Canada. But the thing that we have to think about is four cuts, 1%, 1% off of our rate is a little bit better from a 
level perspective than 1% off their rate. Not much, but I think, you, I think you could see that. The issue that we face, though, John, is yeah. our currency. You know, if we, if we drop our interest rates down, our currency could suffer, which causes further inflationary pressures. And you've seen wage settlements in Canada that are much higher than those in the U.S., primarily driven by the unionization elements of not necessarily people who work at Canadian Tire, but it's the people who are working in the government, they're 4%. Like that's tough. Yeah. How do we get that? How do we get that genie pushed into the the two to three percent target? You're right. 